All right, let's see how stupid this title is, because I saw Twins and Doubles Must Not Something Something. Twins and Doubles Must Not Appear Unless We Have Been uh, Duly Prepared for Something. I didn't read the rest of it. It was long. He's lying, right? Please tell me he's lying, Harriet. How could you do it, Mother? This lady killed Chris? Good grief, things have certainly gotten noisy. Though it does make for a good opportunity to answer your questions. <laughs> what? Ah yes, I never did explain it to you, did I? Mash had the same misunderstanding. What? You mean I made a mistake with the Violet family tree I drew? Indeed, I'm quite certain that Harriet is Adamaska's wife, while the daughters are Juliet and Eva. But I drew it exactly how Senpai described it. If I'd made a mistake, he would have noticed. Not necessarily. He is somewhat preoccupied with the pers uh, personages of Kiauda. Perhaps a bit too much so, it turns out. By way of example, tell me, Mash, what do you think of when you think of Lancelot? Oh joy, I can't wait to hear this fucking response. The fact that he's Galahad's father, I suppose. Oh, thank God. There you have it. That is exactly the line of thinking that has tripped our vein up. If a woman who looks like Steno told you she has a younger sister, you would immediately think of Yoriel, no? Ah... Similarly, once Eva was assigned Minamoto no Raiko's appearance, Vane could not help but see her as anything other than a mother. Of course, I don't believe Juliet meant to deceive Vane, since he had no and she had no way of knowing his unique circumstances. It was merely an unfortunate misunderstanding that persisted till now. I want to both say that's kind of clever. But that's also really stupid. Because it's clearly written with that twist in mind, and you can kind of tell looking back over it now. Also, Harriet doesn't do anything during this plot. Like, now that I've thought about it, she really doesn't do fucking anything. I mean, I guess that's a good sign of a villain. She didn't try to make herself noticeable, but I think her absence in and of itself was suspicious. She didn't try to do anything. But, but Eva had to be the mother. That way the parents would be Adamaska and Eva, and the twins would be Juliet and Harriet. But they're not identical twins. They are fraternal twins. It just makes sense. Why would they name them any other way? More likely they were named for their parents. Juliet's name was taken from Harriet. Eva's from Adamaska, you see. Such an arrangement certainly makes sense. But if Harriet is Juliet's mother, why do they look the same age? Remember, Morris was a man who looked like Mordred. It's no surprise that there would be other distrep... Di uh... Dis... Disparities? Dis... Disparities? Between what Vane saw and reality. Something as simple as a difference in age could certainly be such a detail that was altered. It does make sense now that I think about it. I think that's maybe what the whole scene with Mordred is trying to set up. Things are not as they appear. This is so confusing. I imagine Vane must be even more confused since he is only learning the truth now from Holmes. Surely you must have seen the signs. For example, think back to the conversation you had when you asked Ava her alibi. I don't even remember her alibi. Thing unusual happen around that. Uh, oh, right, right. I called her Miss Violet and she got confused. Miss Violet, well, that's a strange question. No, mother turned in early last night. Right, right. That's another sign, right. I didn't think about that one at first. She was asking about, uh, she thought I was asking about Harriet. It seems you remembered something. One such revelation tends to lead to others, like so many dominoes. Oh, 
let's see, what was this? Now, now, you mustn't let your appearance slide over something like this. Haven't you noticed your hair getting sticky from the ocean breeze? Not really. It's not like I've been to the beach. I must say, it's always fascinating to see twins with such different personalities. Oh, right, right. So you're just supposed to believe you've got an alibi, huh? I mean, hypothetically speaking, couldn't twins swap places to pull this kind of thing off? Just saying. No way. No one would uh, get them mixed up like that. I know I wouldn't. Ah. Right. You and your sister are a lot alike, huh? Think I, I know we're twins, but we're actually fraternal. I don't see much resemblance myself. Personality-wise, I think she takes after mother. They're both really care uh, free-spirited. I honestly kind of jealous. See, that's where I started thinking about this. Because now that I'm thinking about it, what threw me off about this was the idea that she says takes after mother. They're both really free-spirited. But the fact is, whenever we saw Harriet talk, um, or like she was never really, or. Raiko acted way more like, uh, or whatever the fuck, Eva, whatever, acted way more free-spirited than we actually saw Harriet do. So, may, so it sounded like she was trying to imply that Harriet takes after, uh, Eva, but in fact it's kind of the other way around. It's the same principle as optical illusions. Once you've seen something that isn't there, it can be very difficult to unsee it. There have been even cases that would have been solved very quickly had it not been for confusion regarding who was related to whom. The problem is that this entire story was set up with that confusion in mind. So... Force confusion? I don't know. Harriet's alibi was supposed to have been verified by Eva, and Eva's alibi verified by Juliet. But, as only Eva and Juliet were together at that time, that leaves Harriet without an, without an alibi. Furthermore, Harriet had no idea about Chris's pocket watch. I also kind of forgot that Eva was supposed to be with Harriet. Or something like that. Or that they were supposed to be together or whatever. I just discounted the fact that we talked to everyone except for Harriet and she didn't say anything. Had it not been for that, things might have gone quite differently. Would you please stop and allow me to get a word in? I have to say, you certainly found a hell of a detective, Aaron. Then you really did kill them. Wait, I remember now. Twenty years ago, I had a one-night stand with a woman I can't- what the fuck? With a woman I never saw again. Yes, that was you. You even mentioned your name was Harriet. I was just looking to have some fun. I didn't want to cause any more trouble than was necessary, so I left out my family name. Do I seem drunk to you? I'm actually at a loss because I can't seem to get drunk. Oh, by the way, I haven't taken you to bed before, have I? You're just as gross as Morris was. My apologies, I've been uh, with so many women, it's impossible to keep track of them all. I must have confused you with one of my... Myriad one-night stands. Yeah, I caught on to that one. No wonder Juliet seems so familiar. She looks just like you did back then. I did enjoy that night we spent together, Aaron. I have no regrets about that part. But I didn't find out until later that I'd become pregnant with Juliet and Eva as a result. By the time I had, it was already too late. My parents had promised me to Adamaska. I had little say in the matter. I already knew you were pregnant when we got married, Harriet. You have nothing to feel bad about. Thank you, Adamaska. I do so adore how understanding you are. But I just couldn't tell you, nor or my parents, who Juliet and Eva's father really was. If I had, my father would have been so angry when he would have started a war with the Goldie family. But I never imagined a secret I decided to keep almost 20 years ago could lead to... This. Yeah, you murdered two people. Harriet, what are you doing all the way out here? I have a favor to ask you. I want you to reconsider your engagement to Juliet. Huh? Where'd that come from? And what's it matter to you? 
I'm sorry, but I can't tell you that yet. I don't get it. But okay, I'm fine taking Eva instead. She's more my type anyway. I'm sorry, but I cannot let you marry Eva either. Why's that? I can't tell you. Man, this is nuts. Are all you violet chicks this crazy? I don't know why my old man's so afraid of you guys. He should have made up an excuse to invade your turf long ago. I can't possibly tell him the truth. If I did, it could lead to all-out war between our families. I... I'll just have to push him off this cliff. Look, Morris, can you see that ship over there? Huh? There's no way a ship come all the way... A ship come all the way out. Whee! Dead. You want me to reconsider the engagement? That's right. I thought you of all people could be reasonable about that. Does that mean you want Miss Juliet to marry for love rather than politics? If that's how you want to interpret it. Nonetheless, I have been named Mr. Aaron's successor. If he desires this engagement, I am obliged to comply. So I'm very sorry, but I'm afraid I must refuse your request. Damn it. I can tell there's no chance of me convincing him. I'll have to kill him too. I had hoped it could be only Morris. I see. By the way, can I see your hand for a moment? Yes, of course. Thank you. Miss Harriet, what did you just do? Goodbye. It's a dangerous world, so I've always been certain to keep a bit of poison on me. But I never thought I would end up using it on Chris like that. You did all that for me, Mother? Juliet, please understand you did nothing wrong. This was all my doing, and so I will pay the price. Thinking about it now, I guess I should have told my father about this. Maybe then if I'd ended up marrying Aaron instead. None of this would have happened. If only I had known what you were dealing with, I could have helped you find another way. I'm just as guilty as you are. I may have been too oblivious to share your suffering, but I can at least share your punishment. Thank you, Adamaska. This might not mean much coming from me now, but... You were the best husband I could have asked for. Good. No, she used the poison on herself! I still had some left over. I'm sorry, I couldn't think of another way to make amends. Mother. Eva Kane. Oh, no, wait, that's Harriet. <laughs> Eva Kane, I love you all so much. And Juliet, please don't make the same mistake I did. Mother, wait, don't go. Goodbye. Blech. Well, that was fun. All right, should be here soon. I'm afraid I must ask you all to get ready to leave. Please, let me stay with Mother just a little longer. Mother? I'm so sorry, everyone. I could have stopped her. As soon as I heard about the threatening letter, I had a feeling this might have been the case all along. I remember what she was like back then. Still, I couldn't bring myself to ask her about it. I know I should have said something, but I just couldn't bear the thought of her hating me. Please don't be so hard on yourself. This case, would this case would remain unsolved without your help. Me? No, I'm just a sniveling coward who left all the dirty work to you. God, ain't that the fucking truth. I'm sad that Morse is dead, but if I had been in Harriet's shoes, I think I might have done the same thing. Excuse me, everyone. There's something I want to tell you. Kane, what's come over you? Kane? It looks like Kane has decided to come clean. Now that all eyes are on him, this seems it would be a good time for us to have a private chat. <laughs> Why do you think I ended up uh, in this dream thing to begin with? Plot? I'm sure Da Vinci could explain this connection between you, Kialda, and Ray shifting in Magecraft terms. But I'm afraid that is all a bit beyond my area of expertise, as it were. The best I can do under the circumstances is offer conjecture. 
I imagine whoever that body belongs to must have had a powerful reaction upon learning, learning Juliet was engaged. Whether out of friendship, love, or perhaps pity, they must have wished to help her with all their heart. From here on, my speculation takes a turn for the romantic, but perhaps the moon saw that wish and decided to grant it. Perhaps in searching for someone with both the ability to help in this matter and someone with a desire to do so, it found you and used Kialda to forge some manner of connection between you with Moonlight as its conduit. Kialda is no stranger to oddities of time and space. And you did truly wish to help Juliet, no? Well, can I be done with this stupid event now? I have such high hopes for this. And you literally ruined all of it! Could have been so much more. And they literally had to have Home show up in Deus Ex Machina everything. God, I hate fucking Holmes. Man. You know, I know people say I'm usually like a real negative Nancy when it comes to fate, but truth be told, it's like, you know, I do it because I care. I want to see FGO do better. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with mediocrity. I know it can do better. I don't want to simply accept that it's just, Oh, it doesn't make sense, so I'm just going to pretend it does. No. I want it to make sense. I want people to understand and like it as much as I do. This isn't, what I feel now isn't even hate. It's not like usual when I call something on its BS and say, Oh, that's stupid, that's dumb. This is, this is genuine disappointment. It's something really good going here. The Kiata scenes were a little rough, but I mean, at least they were pushing the plot along. Then Holmes literally showed up and just deus mocking at his way into the fucking uh, plot and just ruined it all. He took the entire spotlight off the main character and just said, No, I think I'll show my big dick and fucking just ruin all this because I have all the answers. So dumb. Ugh, let's get this over with. It would seem you are about to lose consciousness again. I suppose that makes sense as your role here is complete. By the time you wake up, I will have already set off for the real Kogetsu Kun. But rest assured that I will return in a few days. Well now, it seems that Kane is saying something quite important indeed. I still hate this family and this whole society. I'm scared of dying too, but I decided to be brave. I see now that even small lies can have huge consequences. My mother taught me that. So I'm telling you all right here and now. I'm going to change the Violet and the Goldie families! Perhaps he really will succeed at changing the way both families live their lives. But that is no longer our concern. Alright. I do believe this is the last time you will see these people. So if there's anything you've been meaning to tell a certain someone, now is the time. Something that body's true owner may have been wanting to say. Or perhaps even should say. What is it, Vane? With Mother's death and Kane's revelation, I... I feel like I'm losing my mind. I wanted you to know that. I'll always be here for you, Juliet. Always. Where did that come from? And you're saying that now of all times? No, you're right. Now is exactly the time I need to hear that. You always know what to say. Thank you, Vane. That means a lot to me. You know, I have something to tell you as... Vane, what's wrong? Are you alright? Arrivederci. And so ends the case of the murders at the Kogetsukan. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed half of it at least. Before you decided to ruin it. 
I congratulate those of you who arrived at the truth. If you got it wrong, well, don't feel bad. If those who made mistakes were without worth, then I am afraid I would be the only one in the world with any worth to his name. That was a joke. Go on. Laugh. Just fucking in this event. At any rate, even if one error or another led you to the wrong conclusion, no one can say you did not give it your all. That experience is yours and yours alone. If you enjoyed your experience at all, uh, at all over these last few days, that is enough in and of itself. Everyone makes mistakes at times, even me. That is why the search for answers is as much a journey as it is a process of trial and error. At any rate, this concludes our latest case. I do apologize that the detective ended up monopolizing the spotlight. Fuck. You. This little event was, admittedly, small in scale compared to others, but I hope one day to take you on a much grander adventure, one truly worthy of a great detective. Now just shut the fuck up and go away. I don't want to deal with this anymore. Uh... What bullshit. Yay. Yay. Yay, because everybody guessed it right. Mostly because everyone fucking knew because we had precognition. That's it. That's the end for murder at the uh, Kogetsu Con. Pretty much all I, all I wanted to say about this. I mean, nothing else has much changed. Nothing at all. I liked the half of it. It was a good, like, little mystery tale, and I was really enjoying it. The Kiata scenes, uh, they were, you know, they were kind of intrusive, and I kind of wish I could do without them. And then Holmes literally just bullshitted his way into the plot using bullshit. And then, God, I stopped caring. Uh, I hope one day if they try to do this again, they, they don't do that. Don't, don't make Holmes the center of fucking attention. We get it. He's the world's greatest detective. Whoopie fucking shit. Don't frame the MC as being the detective who's going to solve all this and literally take that away from the character. The MC is not exactly the most fucking emotive. And in fact, I've outright like bashed how stupid simply stupid the MC is for plot purposes in the game but don't fucking give him a role and then just say huh no we're taking that away now Holmes do the rest you know what to do you have the script so dumb <sighs> that's gonna be it for now guys so until next time I'll catch you all later I'm gonna go like have some ice cream in the refrigerator. I'm gonna go eat myself out of sadness. Asta.